God is so good. He's so good to to me. Grab somebody by the hand and tell them, say, it's good to see you on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday, Worship and Deliverance Day. God bless you. You can be seated if you can. Appreciate those of you out there in the live stream, those of you that are viewing us again on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Some folks, it's Father's Day. Amen. But it's really Father's Day every day. Say amen. Some folks are daddies, but they're not fathers. Few folk are fathers. But the Bible said, he's not giving us the spirit of bondage. You're getting the fear of the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Not just Father, but Father with a relationship. Father with a, 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 a knowing. Some folk don't know their daddy. I didn't have the privilege of being able to grow up to know my father. Say man. But I'm thankful that God always stepped in and did what he had to do. Say man. God's in total control. We love you. Those of you who want to give special thanks to all my elders. Amen. Amen. Got it. All the way from London, England. Pastor Melford Allen, my brother, sometimes it just, we've been iron sharp and if iron is hard sometimes, he just, he started coming around this ministry and it caused him to lose a lot of things, friends, family, but he said, Brother McCoy, I'm not just friends with you, I'm friends with what's in you. As long as I'm friends with what's in you, I'm willing to sacrifice. It's rough when you lose people that you've been around all your life for the truth. Just for the truth. Because he wants to make a stand. He has to call all the way to the United States to just get strength. Say man. Flew over here yesterday. He has to hurry me back just one day just to come and be with me and here you are right across the street and he has to get it live stream sometime I call him and our live stream is like what is it six hours later say man and he calls me sometime he's stirred up he can't wait cause he know it's, be, it's gonna be late for us early for him but he calls he's so stirred say man just through the virtual but he said forget that I got to come and at least get one day of reality is that right I thank God for him being with us amen I love you so glad to see him amen thank God for all of my elders elders wives love you church mother mother Hallman in her absence sister Dorothy absence all of you visit the saints and friends amen a lot of people celebrating with their fathers there's nothing wrong with it say amen because you only have one of them in the natural one mother one father is that right and we honor them we, especially if they really been a true father been a provider put a roof over your head clothes on your back say amen can't do everything but they did the best they could do say amen now I'm not going to blow in the time <clears throat> I'm going straight <clears throat> into the word of God we appreciate God for all of you to the book of Romans, beloved, chapter 5. And I want you to give me your undivided attention. You know, sometimes you have to say things by way of remembrance. And sometimes it looked like Brother McCoy just preaching the same thing over and over. And I am. And I am. If you really look at it and tie it in, everything is tied in the G to, 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 to your faith to the word, to your faith, to love, to God. Everything is going to point you to the word, to the faith, you understand, to God, to the love and to God. To the book of Romans, beloved, chapter 5, and begin reading to you from verse 8. <laughs> now give me your undivided attention, pay attention. 
He said, but God commended his love toward us. And he showed his love toward us. In that while, now folk don't understand this, he chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. The Bible said, uh, in the, while we were yet sinners, God raised us up together with Christ and made us sit together in heavenly places in him. He said, God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Say much more. Much more than now being justified by his blood. Say much more. Being justified by his blood. The Bible said where there's no shedding of blood, there's no remission. The Bible said we who are far off are made nigh unto God by the blood of the lamb. The songwriter said what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the what? The blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Those of you on the live stream, you know what time it is. What a man may be today, may not be that tomorrow. People are flipping, changing overnight. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about in a year's time, overnight. Amen. Search the scriptures to know whether or not what the apostle is saying is of God. Because you got many false prophets, many false Christs, and people are giving you 98% word and then turn that corner on the 2% and cause you to lose your soul. Stay in the word. And the Bible said, now much more being now justified. Now watch, say much more, much more than being now justified by his blood. Now there's something that's, that happens after the blood. The blood saves, the blood washes, the blood atones, the blood uh, reconciles. But much more after the blood. Now pay attention because... The church world has then got so educated that it doesn't explain the way the word of God away. See, he told you to subdue the earth. He never told you to subdue God. See, the Bible said the ways of God are past finding out. The knowledge of God is past finding out. High as the heavens are above the earth, that's how high God's ways and God's thoughts are above yours. So you can't figure God out. You got to let him lead you. No man know the Father but the Son, and to whomsoever the Son reveals him. Is that right? That's why Paul said, I pray that God give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation. You just don't jump up and think you know God. You just don't go to college and go to some seminar or something and think you can know God. It's got to be revealed. And God don't show everybody the gospel. The gospel is preached unto the meek, unto those that realize I need a savior, those that realize I don't know what to do, don't know where to go, I can't help myself. These are the ones that he gives the gospel message to. So he said, now moreover, being now justified, I'm justified now by the blood. I'm justified, acquitted. I'm acquitted by the blood. In other words, I was guilty of sin because of a gift that was given to me. I had a gift given to me. There was a gift given to me from my father, uh, uh, Adam. You understand? See, uh, Adam is in, 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 in the similitude of Jesus Christ, but in the reversal. He gave us a gift. Something that we didn't deserve it, we didn't do nothing to get it. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like grace, but he gave us sin. He gave us the sin nature, and you're born with that. It's a gift you get from your father, Adam, right? But Jesus come and reverse that and give us another gift, right? And watch it. So being, being, being justified by his blood, much more now, something more than just being justified by the blood. He said, we shall be saved from wrath, what? Now, anytime you have to say through somebody, that means it has to, it through means by or because of. You understand? On the account of, through him. Now, it's not just, we, 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 much more than being justified by the blood. Folk then got saved by the blood, so they stop right there, and they feel like I can live any kind of way, do whatever I want to do. You understand? And that's that. But they don't stop there. It doesn't stop there because he didn't send him into the world to die for your sin so you could keep sinning. That's not the purpose of it. It wasn't the purpose for him to die so for your sin, for you to keep sinning and feel like you got a right to sin. No, he died for your sins, which were past, and then he did something. Much more now, we were saved from wrath through him, right? Now pay attention, it's got to be through him. For, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his what? The Bible said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. To wit, this is it, God was in Christ reconciling the world back unto himself, right? 
You understand? And gave us the same word of reconciliation. So the Bible said we were reconciled unto God through his death. There had to be a sacrifice. And from the very beginning, when Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they sinned. But they, they sowed fig leaves together trying to cover things up. But, amen, that wasn't going to work. So the Bible said God clothed them with skins. That meant something had to die in order for them to be covered. You understand what I'm saying? Like, once again, where there's no shed in the blood, there's no remission. So sin is a very, very serious thing to the point that, that, that the Bible said the wages of sin, and I know folk done got beyond that, the church world and, and educators and preachers done got so smart that they done took uh, the sting of death, you know what I mean? They done took away the, 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 the important, uh, how dangerous sin is. The wages of sin is death. When you sin, you're gonna die. When you sin, that's a law. It's the law of sin and death. It's a law. You can't change the laws. When something sin, it's going to die. Now, I know the church world and told folk you can just sin, and all you got to do is say, just Lord, forgive me. Now, you got to pay attention now. Watch. So he said, if, if, if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, say much more. Say much more. Much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his what? We're going to be saved by his what? Now, now we're not, not, not just being reconciled. We just can't get reconciled, connected back to God. There's something that has to be lived. We have to have the life. Paul, uh, 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 Jesus said, as I live by the Father, even so shall you live by me. Y'all listening to me? Now pay attention. He, Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, not I. Not I. Don't have nothing to do with me because me, me in my, my natural uh, 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 human state, you understand, I'm all together nothing. In my, in my, in my human state, at my, I'm, uh, uh, in, in my best state, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 I'm all together nothing. You understand, my righteousness is as filthy rag in my best state. You understand? Can an Ethiopian change his color? Can a leopard change his spots? How can, then can a man that is accustomed to do an evil turn and do good? You understand? Uh, uh, in, my, in my regular nature, I'm sinful. I, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. You got what I'm saying? So this, in this nature, I can't live this, you understand? So uh, nevertheless, not I, but the Christ that lives within me. This is the life that I'm living. I can't live holy because there's no holiness in me. Paul said, uh, I, I know that within me, that is within my flesh, the well of no good thing. So there's nothing good about me. I'm one of percent evil and without God I cannot do nothing. I cannot make one step to righteousness. You understand what I'm saying? Because when I would to do good, evil is what? Present. I come equipped with it. In the flesh is adultery, fornication, murders, emulation, wrath, evil eyes, uh, deceit, uh, 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 strife, and you understand all of this is uh, 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 witchcraft. All of this is in my flesh. I come equipped with it. You understand? So the only way that I can live this life is through Christ. Now, he didn't come to die for your sin so you could continue sinning. When Adam ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God God cursed the ground. So there's a part of us that's cursed. And so what Christ had to come and do is redeem us from the curse of the law. We're all cursed because of Adam. But Christ redeemed us, took that curse upon himself. But he couldn't leave us like that, right? He couldn't leave you in the flesh. He couldn't just save you, blood wash you, and justify you. He had to do something else. Something had to be much more. Something had to be greater than that. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved saved by what? Now, they'd say, well, you know, the life of Christ, that's what, you know, it's his life, not mine, it's his life. No, it don't work like that. Y'all ready for the word of God? Uh, to the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Let's go to their favorite scripture. To the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now, what? Now, there's therefore now, Brother McCoy, you ain't going to condemn me. You ain't going to condemn me. I'm not trying to condemn you. Jesus said, God, come not uh, into the, to, to condemn the world. I didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but I come that the world might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You understand? I come that through me the, the world might be saved. You got what I'm saying? I didn't come to condemn. But it said, he that believeth on me shall, shall not perish but have everlasting life. But he that believeth not watch, is condemned already. 
is already, you understand, the condemnation is already there. You listening? There's therefore now, right now, no condemnation. And I want you to read this, and I want you to pay attention to it because we skip over stuff. The church will because that flesh, flesh wants to make pro vision for this stuff, right? We want to give flesh a pass. We want to give flesh a right to continue to be what it is. But you don't understand, when you get in the flesh, you don't just hurt yourself. You affect everybody else. If you read from Genesis to Revelation, people that were in the flesh, they didn't just affect themselves. They affected everything that was connected to them. Everybody that got in the flesh, it's sad how, you understand that it, it, when I read how when they passed over into the land of promise, how how Achan, the son of Karma, the son of Zabdi, you understand, took of the accursed thing that God said, don't touch it. You understand, let the whole camp of Israel be cursed, right? Don't touch it. But one man, one man took of the accursed thing, hid it amongst his stuff and lied about it. And when they went out to fight a little bitty nation called Ai, they, they failed. 21 men lost their life. But now God been going before them, fighting every battle, told them that you need not to fight in this battle for the battle is not yours. It belongs unto the Lord. But one man decided that he want to disobey God. And they went up against a small nation and lost. Came back uh, with their tails tucked. Uh, and, and Joshua and the rest of the ministers uh, amen, ripped, rent their clothes and went in sackcloth and ashes uh, and began to pray. God said, up oh, uh, Joshua, get up. What you praying for? What are you praying for? He said, Lord, you done brought us out here to you understand? And, and the enemy environing round about us. And get rid of God. He said, Look at this stuff. He said, No, no, get up. Ain't no sense in praying. Ain't no sense in praying. He said, No sense in talking to me until you get rid of the accursed thing from among you. The children of Israel have sinned in that they have taken of the accursed. One man, one man, one man, but God called it. Uh, they, the children, plural, right? You understand? The children of Israel have sinned in that they have taken of the accursed thing, right? You understand? And they will not be able to stand before the enemy until they get rid of the accursed thing. Well, Joshua went from, from, from tribe to tribe, from family to family until he found out who took it. And guess what it was? It wasn't the whole children of uh, 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 tribe of Israel. It was one man, one man, uh, you understand? One man. Achan, one man, one man brought judgment up on, on all Israel. But watch this here. One man took it, didn't even tell his uh, wife, didn't tell his children, didn't tell his mom and daddy what he had done. Took it and hid it. Took it, see, you can, watch this. See, the church world got y'all doing stuff. Got y'all taking and hiding stuff. Hiding sin, adultery, fornication. Hiding lust and perversion, right? But not knowing that, that, that you're not just going to pay for it. You understand? Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord because one man can affect it all. His uh, Achan, his wife didn't know, children didn't know because he hid it. But when, when they found out who did it, they brought Achan and his whole whole entire family out, stoned them and burnt them because of one man's sin. One man's sin. One man going to look at another man's wife and, and look at her son, baby, when he should have been out in, a, in, in warfare. You know, when it was time for war, he laid up on his bed and when he did get up, he saw a woman sunbathing and this flesh, flesh, flesh. I'm talking about a man anointed and appointed, jumped in the flesh. I'm talking about a man that God said is a man after my own heart. Jumped in the flesh. You understand what I mean? And looked and saw a, 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 a a Cushite woman uh, sunbathing and asked uh, his servant, this is a king, this is the king, could have anything he wanted, concubines, had wives, had everything that he wanted, but then all of a sudden flesh wanted some more. Flesh always want more than it's supposed to have. It can't satisfy with the one wife. It's not satisfied with the one husband. It's not satisfied with what God have offered. So he said, Who's, uh, who is that woman? They said, uh, it's your wife's wife, Bathsheba. He said, bring her to me. 
And they brought the woman to him and cleaned her up. And he, he went into and had sex, right? Uh, and, and sent her home because her husband was out on the battlefield fighting, uh, upholding, uh, you understand, uh, the, 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 the bloodstained banner for David, fighting for him. You understand, when you in the flesh, it's dirty to the third power. It'll make you hurt folk that love you. When you get in the flesh, your flesh is dirty. I'm talking about low down and dirty. This man out there defending the kingdom at risking of his own life and you sat up here and took the man's wife while he out there fighting for you, defending you and committed adultery with her. Then sent the woman home, right? Y'all don't hear me? And found out that the woman was pregnant and now here comes flesh. And you got to mess up flesh sin unto sin. You got to understand evil men and seducers are waxing worse. Ain't no time to be playing. Ain't no time to be playing pity pat. We in the last day the ends of the world up on us. We got to call a spade a spade. He said cry loud, spare not lift up thy voice like a trumpet in Zion and show God's people they transgression and the house of Jacob they sin. Watch out. And so he found out now this is what flesh gonna do. Now you got to pay attention because everybody giving folk a pass for sin and don't know how dangerous sin is. Preachers are saying it's okay. It ain't no sin grace covers it all. Ain't nobody going to hell. Everybody once saved, always saved. Y'all don't hear me what I'm saying, but not knowing the detriments, the, 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 the diabolatry of sin. Here this man, the messed up, found out the woman was pregnant and then what he does, he, that, his slickness, that dirty, that lying spirit come upon him. He said, go tell Uriah to come back from the battle and come to the palace. I want to talk to him. And, and they brought Uriah back, a fight a warrior defending the kingdom for this man. Brought this man in the house and told you right. He said, uh, I, I, I see you, you're a good soldier and you've been doing a wonderful job and I tell you what you do, uh, why don't you go home and be with your wife, you understand meaning if you go home and have sex with her, then they could blame the baby on you, you know what I'm saying cause there wasn't no uh, DNA test back then, right, so we could blame it on you, look at what sin, this was an anointed man, this was a man uh, that said the Lord is my shepherd, this is the man uh, that said the Lord is my light and my salvation, uh, whom shall I fear this is the man, uh, this is the man that, that it, it took a lion uh, by the beard and rent him in pieces uh, and took a bear and slew him. This is the man uh, that took a little slingshot uh, and knocked Goliath out and cut his head off uh, with his own sword. This is the man that brought deliverance uh, for, the children to, for the children of Israel against the Philistines. But now, the moment you get in the flesh, the moment somebody can give you a pass, you about ready to not wreck your life, but you'll wreck every Everybody else wonder why the reproach is on the church and the people are looking at the pastor and wonder why what kind of words your pastor preaching pastor ain't got nothing to do with, with how you're living on the outside y'all don't give me but he brings the man back and tell him go home and be with your wife y'all don't give me but this was a real soldier you understand a, a, a brother Frederick a stone down thoroughbred he went out of the king's palace and got on the front porch and thought about his comment Comrades out there risking their lives fighting, not having the privilege to be able to go home and be with their wives. He said, I cannot do it when I'm thinking about my other fellow soldiers not being able to have the privilege. The Bible said he laid and slept on the porch of the palace. And when David found out that the man did not go home and he wouldn't go home because he was a real soldier. Are y'all listening to me today? You understand? Would not go home. David said, now watch what sin does. Sin unto sin. See what you're doing? You're them demons when you do not confess. See the church well ain't got y'all confessing because you don't feel you got to confess. You don't feel like you got to own up to nothing. You don't feel like you got to uh, 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 confess your sin. Now you got a right to do it. You understand? So ain't nobody confessing. So when you don't confess, down. when you don't confess, 
When you don't confess, y'all listen to me, what happens is open doors. Unconfessed sin, when you lying and you hiding demons, demons don't play. They'll open up other doors and before you know it, you just was smoking, you just was drinking a little nip. Now other demons done crept in. Y'all don't hear me? And you get so many in there, they'll put you on lockdown and they such liars till they'll make you feel like you okay. They'll let you come to church. They'll let you operate. They'll let you claim your title. Let you claim your office. But they'll put you on lockdown. You understand what I'm saying? The demons are smarter than you can ever imagine. They done been in the presence of God. They done walked among the stones of fire. They know how to worship. They know how to have church. They know how to preach. They know how to sing. So they can trick you. They can mimic anything. So now look at the demons. David ain't confessing. You understand? So demons are getting worse. So now he uh, can't can get the man to go home uh, and be with his wife. Uh, so guess what he does? Uh, he sets there this man. Uh, this is what evil, this is how evil sin is. Uh, this man that is risking his life. This man that is risking his life, are y'all listening to uh, Risking his life. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, for, 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 the, for this, uh, for the country willing to die, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, for, for the right of David. Uh, this man was sitting here. David sitting there done wrote a letter to, your, to, your, uh, to, 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 to Joab uh, and told Joab, the captain of the host, uh, he said, take Uriah, put him on the front line of the battle. You understand? And when the heat of the battle comes, all y'all withdraw and leave him there. Imminent death. I'm talking about imminent death. You understand? Put it in an envelope, sealed it and put his signet on it and gave it to Uriah. You sitting up there working for a man and thinking that, my God, he's patting you on the back and telling you all what good soldier you are and then put your death certificate in your hand. You walking down the road with a death certificate. You understand? Getting ready to kill you. You setting up uh, with believing in your leader. Believing. You understand that this man got your best interest at heart uh, and he done gave you a letter with your sentence in it. Uh, and this man goes out there and gives the letter to Uriah and Uriah cold it. I mean j j give the letter to Joab uh, and Joab cold his eyes. Uh, he's he even he just says evil. You understand? He puts the Uriah on the front line, step back, and they kill Uriah. Then David goes, takes the man after he found out he's dead, marries the woman, bring the woman in the house. Y'all don't give me what I'm saying. Brings the woman in the house and watch. You getting by, but you ain't gonna get away. Y'all listen to me. You're not gonna get away. You think you're getting away? Church world got y'all thinking you're gonna jump on a banana peel and slide into the kingdom of God. I beg to differ with you. There's coming a reckoning day. You understand? The Bible said the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. You understand? Beholding the evil and the good. The Bible said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as, my, as his work shall be. You got to understand God ain't playing. God's not playing one iota. You understand? Sin. You understand? Be sure your sin is going to find you out. Look at David that married the woman. But God killed the child. God killed the baby that she had. He was crying all night long. Thought he got away. But one day, hallelujah, prophet came to David by the name of Nathan. Now I'm telling you, your, 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 your day's coming. Came to David. And this is what's so sad. God can send you a prophet and you still want to reject God like Saul. You still want to reject him. After you cold busted, he could, uh, Nathan came to David and said, David, that was a rich man, a man that was wealthy uh, and had everything that you can imagine. Uh, Y'all listening to me? Uh, and, and, and he had a friend that came in the way uh, and, and, and he wanted to, uh, and he was going to uh, uh, fix a food, uh, a dinner for him. Uh, but instead of him taking, uh, uh, Y'all listening to me today, uh, taking of his flock, uh, he had all kind of sheep. Uh, he went through the village uh, and found a man uh, that had a little wee lamb. Uh, I'm talking about a pet lamb. This was 
wasn't a lamb he was talking about killing, making lamb chops. Uh, this was a lamb that he was in love with, uh, that he nurtured like his own child. Uh, and the rich man took uh, the poor man's little wee lamb uh, and took it and killed it uh, and gave it to his friend. Uh, David backed up being the king said, uh, the man that have done such a thing should be killed. Uh, he shall die. Nathan backed up a non-conforming preacher ain't bowing down for man, woman, uh, money, position. Uh, he said, thou art the man. He said, thou art the man, David. You're the man. You took a man's wife, you understand? Killed the man. Took the man's wife. And you understand? Watch this, David. You did it in secret. You treble. You did it in secret. You did it in secret, David. You understand what I'm saying? Didn't nobody know about it, but guess what? I'm going to reward you for it openly. I'm going to reward you for this thing openly. Now watch now, I'm, I'm just getting started right. I'm just breaking it down to you uh, to show you uh, that it's okay now. To show you the detriment. Uh, you understand of uh, playing with sin. Uh, you understand you did it in the secret uh, but I'm going to reward you openly. Uh, I'm going to let your child uh, lay with your wives in the con openly in the congregation uh, so they can see him on top of the house uh, laying with your wife. And it ain't going to stop there. You understand because of one sin uh, one thing you done, uh, he said, the sword shall not depart. Uh, you understand from Judah. In other words, they would have war. They would always have war. You understand? Uh, I'll be 68 years old, September the 10th, uh, and I've never seen Israel uh, at peace. Uh, every time you look around, they got one peace treaty after another peace treaty, uh, but they can't keep one because uh, one man decided uh, he wanted to sin. Uh, one man, that, uh, that's okay. Uh, the church world and gave y'all a pass uh, and don't want you to know the seriousness of sin. Uh, sin is so serious that God sent his son uh, to not die but to be tortured uh, to be brutalized uh, you understand what I mean? Uh, I'm talking about to the point uh, it was so brutal that they called the death of the cross a curse uh, just for you to, that's how serious sin is uh, you understand? Uh, David because of your sin uh, Israel will always have to die Israel will always be in war because one man uh, wanted some sex one man uh, wanted sin uh, you brought that judgment on your whole house uh, a whole tribe one sin, one man, Adam, one man, sin brought death unto all of us. We didn't even sin. We were just born in sin because of what Adam done. We got to come out of the wound in sin. We got to come out of the wound. Somebody got to teach us how to do good. I don't care if your mama got the Holy Ghost and your daddy speaking in other tongues. When the baby come out, it comes out doing wrong. It comes out lying. It comes out corrupt. And we, because of one man's sin, and we set up in this modern generation, and somebody that explained the way sin, that it explained the way the consequences of sin. Y'all sitting around because they don't set up here. I'm talking about the pleasures, but I'm here to tell you that the, the consequences are far greater than the pleasures. Let me get into the word. He said, There is therefore now, now, right now. No condemnation to them that are where? Now, better get this stuff straight. These lying book is playing with your soul. Man, these demons are so thick out here. People are getting lost and can't find their way back because the preachers that took the landmarks, the preachers, they done sat around. You understand what I'm saying? They done, they done took the word of God. We don't, they done took away the light. They done took away the guidelines. We can't find our way back home. Demons, you got to understand the Bible's right. Darkness is going to cover the earth and gross darkness to people. God is light, but the devil is in everlasting chains of darkness. He's talking about demons here. Demons going to cover the earth and gross of, of, of full amount of demons going to get on people. You look at folks sitting around. I mean, just evil, just mean like God don't even exist. You so caught up in your house, so caught up in your little bank account, so caught up in your little car. You understand? Like I told them yesterday, you understand? When you come into this world, you came in this world naked. You didn't come in with a wife. You didn't come in with children. You didn't come in with grandbabies. You didn't come in with a house. You didn't come in with a car. You didn't come in with a bank account. You understand? All of that was loaned to you. 
he loaned that to you and you're going to put the loner above the owner you understand what I'm saying you stand up there worshiping the creature more than the creator you done got caught up in the gift and forgot all about the giver you so wrapped up in the resource till you forgot about the source and we sitting up here watch it's crazy you understand we sitting up here putting emphasis on all of this material stuff you can't come to church because you trying to get it you kind of get it your mind is on your money and your money is on your mind and then set up here you understand and God call your foolish soul home and tell you to come home after all the money and all the stuff you done built and all the stuff that you thought you had you ain't got nothing and when they read the obituary they said he left behind a wife three kids and two grandchildren she left behind a husband well if you left behind a wife a husband and children guess what else you left behind you left everything else behind what can a man possibly give in exchange for his soul the Bible said life does not consist of the abundance of things that a man possess we done made emphasis everybody you understand is so busy trying to get something that you ain't got and why Jesus called it the deceitfulness of riches because it allowed to you to make you think you have something and you don't have nothing but he came and he sent his son you understand to pay a price for you to die for you to give you something that you can have for eternity you can't have the house you can't have the car you can't have the wife you can't have the children you can't have the husband you can't have them forever let me break let me break the truth down you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free the thing which you see is temporal you think I'm lying look at your 16 year old pictures and look at your pictures today it's temporal you understand what you used to be you ain't that no more buy a brand new car take it to Walmart and when they get finished putting door dings on it and the kids get finished dropping dropping snow cones on the floor messing up the carpet you understand what you see you understand it's temporal you understand you can't have it forever but that which is uh, does not seen is eternal in the heaven you willing to forsake your eternal life for the temporal you willing to set up and sell your birthright sell your eternal peace your joy your happiness you understand what I mean your right to the tree of life for a few minutes of pleasure you understand for a few things on earth that you can't take with you when I was sitting there in my prayer room and I had some clothes on the bed I had a little money on the dresser and I sat there thinking if I was to die right now nothing in this room would move I couldn't take nothing with me but something in our human foolish mind make us think we're smarter than God here God's trying to give you real peace real joy you understand what I'm saying and you think you're sitting around willing to forsake the almighty God for something that you can't even have Job tried to tell you when he lost 10 children Job tried to tell you when he lost everything that he thought he had in one day. Job backed up and you understand usually people be so grief hearted you understand what I mean? They be messed up but Job put on sackcloth and ashes. He didn't put on sackcloth to go and mourn it. He put on sackcloth to even put more affliction on himself to prove something to the almighty God to let him know I'm going to not now you uh, allow my children to get killed but I'm going to even a flick myself and I'm not going into mourning. I'm going into worship. I'm going into telling you you're the king of kings. You're the lord of the lords. You're the great I am. You're the creator. You're the shepherd. You're the redeemer. You're my shield. You're my buckler. You're my strong tower. You're my laying down. You're my getting up. You're the joy of my soul. You're the peace of my mind. He went to worshiping God and backed up and gave the revelation. He said ain't no, ain't no sister me curse and nobody. He said, naked naked came I into the world and naked will I leave out. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Y'all sitting around, you think you got something. You think you woke up and went to work. You think you put your clothes on. But in him you live. You move and you have your being. In him, if it be not for the Lord, you wouldn't make another step.
step. It's God that gives to all men life and breath and all things. If it don't be for the Lord, you would not be here. You couldn't be here. Nothing but the mercy and the grace of God. You understand what I'm saying? If it don't be for the mercies of God, we'd all be consumed. Nobody but the Lord. What did David say? If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where in the world would Israel be? You sitting up here thinking you came to church. You ain't came to church. You understand what I mean? It was God that moved you. The preparation of the heart and the answer of the tongue in a man is from the Lord. The steps of a man are ordered by the Lord. God worketh in you both the will and the to do according to his good pleasure. Are y'all listening to me? God moving the pieces. Nobody but the Lord allowed you to come into the house of God. And you should have read this, the little scripture above the door when it said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Are y'all listening to me today? You understand what I'm saying? But y'all didn't do it because you thought you was doing something. You thought you walked in here. But it was nobody but God. Because if God hadn't gave you a mind. You could have been in a whole house. You could have been in a crazy house. You could have been walking in intensive care. You could be walking you understand in a strip joint that nobody but the Lord could have been walking in a liquor store. Could have been walking in a crack house. But nobody but God allowed you to walk in the house of God. I'm telling you, you don't understand the love of God, how much he loves us. And look what we do to his love. Look what we do. He gives you life, breath, strength, you understand? He gives you life, breath, and strength in all things. God, listen, he ain't got to take your house. He ain't got to take your husband. He ain't got to take your wife. He ain't got to take your money. All God got to do is take your breath. Take your breath. You'll never hug another wife. You'll never kiss another husband. You'll never cuddle another child. You understand? You'll never drive another automobile. You'll never spend another dime. If God takes your breath, and we sitting around here that's why he said let everything that have breath let them praise the Lord but you got an attitude like you doing it on your own hands ought to be going up thanking God you understand what I mean that I'm breathing I'm breathing there's folks right now can't breathe you understand what I mean I'm breathing Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord but we unthankful one of the things the signs of the end time and people going to be unthankful they they don't thank God for nothing. He said in everything, give God thanks. You ought to thank him. There's folks over in Ukraine. There's folks over in Somalia. There's folks in India. There's folks in war-torn countries that don't have running water. They don't have food to eat. They don't have a toilet. They don't have a bed to sleep in. Don't have a pillow. Don't have a comforter. Y'all don't give me what I'm saying. Don't have an icebox. Y'all don't give me what I'm saying. They got their babies laying in the middle of the street uh, and you set up in here laying out uh, 100, uh, 110, 15 degree weather and you set up, uh, you can push a button uh, and regulate the temperature in your house. Uh, you understand? Uh, they got to walk, they got to walk miles uh, just, just to get water. But you can jump in a car, hit a button uh, and the car, oh uh, y'all don't hear me uh, and you got your nerves uh, not to give God praise. Uh, you understand what I mean? Uh, I thank God for hot and cold water. I thank God for a toilet. I thank God that I can use that I can use the restroom on my own. You understand? I thank God that I can use the bath to toilet on my own. I'm not on a colostomy bag. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not on a dialysis machine. You setting up here taking God for granted. I'm thanking God for a toilet. I done been in countries. You know, you understand? You from a you from a third world country. You understand? They don't know what it means. You understand? They have to use an outhouse. They don't know what it means. People are taking by and defecating in the little river. Y'all, you understand? You and they know, and they got to jump in that same river and and push the water so the feces will go one way, so just they can take a bath. And you setting up in here, you understand? I mean, three and four and five cars parked in the driveway, food in the ice box, food on the back porch in a freezer. Y'all don't give me what I'm saying. It got your nerve not to lift your head. Got your nerve when folk are laying somewhere 
laying in the bed, don't know where they are, can't move, can't raise their hand. Somebody got to pick them up. Somebody got to bathe them. Somebody got to wash their face. Somebody got to wash their behind. And you said to be with all the activities of your limbs. And somebody got to beg you to praise God. Shame on you, America. You understand what I mean? We're ungrateful. We're unthankful. Somebody got to beg you to come to church. And you come to church once a month or once a week. And thinking you done did God a favor. You understand what I mean? Anytime you can give something, more time you give God. It's idolatry. It's idolatry. You shall have no other gods before me. America got other gods before. What is your God? Who is your God? What is your God? What's getting more of your time than God? You understand what I mean? We commit adultery. You understand what I'm saying? And don't know. I'm the Lord that shall supply all your need. I'm your shepherd and you shall not want. I'm a very present helper in the time of need. I can make a way where there seem to be no way. I can give you water out of the rock. I can send you manna from old high. I'm God and I ain't changed. Ain't no shortage in the power. Ain't no shortage in deliverance. Ain't no shortage in the miracle working power of the almighty God. Whatever I've done, that's what I'm doing. And whatever I'm doing, that's what I can continue to do. Y'all set up here to doubt it, God. Talking about can God. I got to help God. You ain't never help God. God don't need your hands. You understand? God can make a million more hands. You understand what I mean? Nobody but the Lord. I'm like David today. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. I can't help myself. I don't even know what to do. God done sent me through some stuff. He gonna send you through some stuff. He gonna put you in something that the doctors are gonna shake their head and say no more I can do. It ain't nothing I can do. The financial creditors, there's no more we can do. The lawyers, no more we can do. You understand? I'm going to put you in position on purpose to show you that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Nobody but God. If it don't be for the Lord, you'll lose your mind. If it don't be for the Lord, you'll blow your brains out. If God listen, God ain't got to kill you. All he got to do is leave you and turn you over to yourself. You'll kill your own self. You doing it now. You drinking yourself to death. You smoking yourself to death. You drugging yourself to death. You sexing yourself to death. You worrying yourself to death. You frustrating yourself to death. You bitter to death. You understand? You'll kill yourself and turn around and kill everybody in the house. I'm telling God tonight, you got to help me. God, you got to deliver me. God, don't let me leave here without you. I can't make it. God, please, Lord, I'm raising children up in sin, as is the father, so is the son, as is the mother, so is the daughter. Raise them up, God, please. I want to be an example, Lord. I want to show my children how to live holy. I want to show my daughters how to walk holy Lord. I know I made some mistakes Lord. I know God but God please have mercy God you're the God of another chance. There's somebody today God gonna give you another chance. There's somebody today God gonna give you another opportunity to make it again. And then there's some folk you so low in it you done got so deep in it that the devil make you feel like ain't nothing wrong with you. But I'm telling God don't ever let me get comfortable in sin where I think that I'm alright don't ever let me lose my conviction don't ever let me lose my cry God don't ever let me lose the knowledge that I'm wrong Lord let me be like David I acknowledge my sin and my sins are ever before you unless you acknowledge them you can't never get delivered it's me old God that stands in the need of prayer not my mother not my sister not the preacher nor the deacon it's me oh God somebody today go get delivered whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord every man is right in his own eyes and it gave you a right to be a sin but you's a killer if you're a sinner you's a killer 
if you're a sinner. You're a killer if you're a sinner. You're a murderer if you're a sinner. The wages of sin is death. If you sin, some little innocent virgin, you take her and you fornicate with her. You's a killer. You's a killer. Somebody you done gave him a drink for the first time. You's a killer. Somebody you done gave him a joint for the first time. You's a killer. Somebody you done introduced to ecstasy. You done introduced her. You understand the dr to drugs. You's a killer. Somebody you done opened up a door like that little girl Billy Eilish said. Uh, you understand at 13 years old, uh, she said porno uh, made me insane. Uh, somebody introduced that little girl uh, to pornography. Uh, sin is a killer. Sin, molestation, rape. You killed somebody. How many killers we got right now? No, 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 I'm not just talking about naturally. We kill folk in other areas of our life. You so busy trying not to do something in the natural. Do you know what you're doing right now in the spirit? Do you know how much you're killing? Do you know how many churches you done tore up? you know how many relationships you done killed? you know how many folks you done turned away from God that will never come back to God because they saw your life on the job? A killer. How many folks said, listen, if that's the way Christians live, I'll never come to God. How many folks' blood is going to be? Blood, that means they're going to die. They blood is on your hand. Why is they blood on your hand? Because you's a killer. Your children. Sometimes the head of a household. God didn't come to Eve. He said, Adam, where art thou? Adam. I'm coming to the man of the house. Where you at? Where you at? You can make one call in the house and shut everybody down. One call, you can stop everybody from going to church. One call. You can make everybody not want to pray. One call. You can stop everybody from wanting to look at the live stream. One call. How many killers we got in the house? How many folk that put demons on your child and killed maybe their future? How many killers? The wages of sin is death, live stream. How many folk have you killed with your ungodly life? The wages of sin is death. I'm going to finish the rest on Tuesday, Lord, say the same. You don't even have a clue. The church world done tricked this bunch so bad. It's so much death. You know, can I tell you about it? Adam, in the day that you, you eat thereof, you're going to die. This is where man thinks he's so smart. In the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. I promise you, you're going to die. But he ate of the fruit. Physically, his physical body Lived 930 years. Because your body is going to work, because you done went to the bank, because you done went uh, and bought another house, you done went and got another car, something in you thank you, make you think you alive. But you forgot the little old saying, they were dead in trespasses and sin. How many dead men and dead women walking? He ain't the God of the dead, he's the God of the living. In the day you eat thereof, you're going to die. And because you're walking around in your little fleshly body, because you don't get, you getting a little paycheck, because you're getting a few things, and you physically, you think you're all right. Sin going to separate you from your God. Sin is a killer. Sin is a faith killer. Sin is a moral killer. Sin will kill your standards. It will kill your It'll kill your loyalty. It'll kill your truthfulness. It'll make a liar out of you. Like old folks said, if you lie, you'll steal. 
And if you steal, you'll kill. How many folk right now you done kill? What has God got to do to you? How sick God got to make you before he can get your attention? How broke God got to get you? He ain't got to break your finances, break your spirit. God can let some stuff happen to you, break you so far down on the inside, make you feel so helpless you won't know whether you're going or coming. God can break you down on the inside, break your emotions. So what has God got to do to get your attention? He loves you. He chasing them whom he loved. He said, my hands are outstretched all day long to a gainsaying and disobedient people. How long would I have gathered thee? How long would I have gathered thee like a chicken to gather her little chicks or broad up under wings, but you would me not? He said, you missed the times of your visitation. I'm going to show you how dead folks say it's what sin will do for you. Sin going to kill your conviction. Sin going to kill your conscience. Sin is going to kill your truthfulness, your loyalty, your faith, your love. It goes down the line. A tree just don't die all of a sudden. Just like a human body don't die all of a sudden. When the coroner get there, he checks and see, and he checks, the heart is not beating, no, no pulse. He pronounces the individual dead. But he pronounces the individual dead. Let me show you how you get tricked. He pronounces the individual dead. But they go inside the individual's wallet and they look at the, they, they, they driver's license and see that they are organ donor. So this person might have got shot or they might have been in a car wreck. So they take that individual that's dead, rush them to the coroner's office, split them from the head down all the way, and open up and take the heart out, put it in an ice chest, take the lungs out, put it in an ice chest, take the kidneys, take every organ, take the brain, take all of these organs out of a dead man, put them in an ice chest, and fly them 400 miles away and take a dead man's organs and put them in a living man in the heart go back to be because when you die all of you don't die completely those of you that have studied the anatomy and you've been to any medical field in concerning the human body it dies in stages. You got the first death. That's why that body is jumping and jerking stuff. And after a while, there's a process of death sets in called rigor mortis to where the body gets hard. See, while you're dead, I got, maybe we can just get some parts. Maybe we can hook you up to others. But there's another part of the death where rigor mortis sets in, where it gets hard. Have you died to the point where you're so hard that can't nobody correct you, can't nothing instruct you, that you don't feel nothing no more? You don't feel nothing, no, no type of word penetrates you no more? Have you gotten to that point in death? And then there's another part of the death. They call it decomposition. That's when the body loses its figure. That's when the body loses, uh, loses all of its features and, 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 and it turns into just globs and fluids and worms and blows up and till it's impossible. What stage death have you played with? See, the preachers is preaching and they're telling you can sin. But you don't see yourself dying, right? Dead man, you can't repent no more. Dead folks don't cry. Dead folks don't repent. Dead folks don't get up and run to the altar. Dead folks don't make no confession. Dead folks can't be honest. Dead folks can't feel an ounce of remorse. 
Dead folks don't have no kind of conviction. You look at the church, you can preach till you blue in the face. Something that happened to us. Have death set into you till your rick and mortis done set in? Or have death set in your spiritual being until you done decomposed? Can't nobody touch you no more. Can't nobody reach you no more. You can sin and feel justified in doing what you're doing. Saying what you're saying, going where you're going, doing what you're doing, and then you got that, that flesh is evil. There's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ. You can't condemn a man that's in him. Finish reading, church, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. If you walk after the spirit, the spirit ain't going to lead you to be a homosexual. ain't going to lead you to be a lesbian. ain't going to lead you to be an adulterer. ain't going to lead you to be unfaithful to your wife or to your husband. ain't going to lead you to fornicate. ain't going to lead you. It's not going to lead you to get drunk. It ain't going to lead you to get high. It's not going to lead you to be vindictive. It's not going to lead you to hate it and be racist. It's not going to lead you. It's not going to lead you. To be vindictive. You can't condemn a righteous man. If you walk in the spirit, you can't condemn him. There's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. You must ain't never read 1 John chapter 4. But I mean, chapter 5, where he, I mean, verse 5 where he says, in him, is no sin. So if you really get in him, you're going to stop sinning. We're not in him. You don't let him get around a book of giving you a pass. Both y'all drinking, both y'all cussing, both y'all homemonging, both y'all sitting up there talking about the church like a dog. You understand? Because both y'all giving one another pass. This misery love company. You better get around somebody going to tell you the truth. Evil communication corrupts good manners. You better get around the church. It's going to call your sin, sin in your head and hell hot and eternity long. You better get around a preacher that ain't going to compromise. It's going to tell you the truth. You understand? Like I tell you, and I'm through. Sweet. I, they got this little candy, and I tell you about it all the time. It's called now or later. You can eat some now. Or you can eat some later. It's, it's, it's where you. It, it, it's not that kind of candy. You just chop down and just it's over. But it takes a little while to eat it. It's called now or later. You can eat some now, or you can eat some later. Let me break this thing down to you. This is what tricks us, preachers, prophets, prophetess, handmaid, pastors, evangelists. This is what tricks us, deacons. He says, some men's sins are open beforehand. Some men that I literally expose you right now. There's some of you that I'll whoop you right now. There's some of you I'll open your sin right now. I'll expose you right now. I'll bring judgment right now. And then there's some of you I will not bother you. I'll do you like I did Solomon. I will not bring war. I will not even bring disease or sickness. I'll leave you like you are until the day you stand before God. And then I'm going to remind you of what you didn't confess and what you didn't repent for. I'm going to remind you of the sin you played with that you thought you had gotten by. Because sentence against an evil work is not speedily executed because I don't get you the day you do it. Evil gets set. That's why you got a bunch of folk that can't stop now because they done got set. Because you slick enough to fool the church. You slick enough to do your rendezvous. You slick enough to come back in church. You slick enough to, to give the, the offering, a, 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 the sacrifice of food. You slick enough. You know how to praise him. You know how to worship. You know how to sing. You know how to, you slick enough to fool man. You have not fooled God. Church people, church folk, 
Uses. Uses. This is why this morning I'm crying. Uses. I said, God, don't let me be wrong, and I don't know that I'm wrong. Uses. Every man is right in his own eye. Don't, don't let me be wrong. Don't let me misguide your people. Don't let me mislead your people and think that I'm right, God. Uses. Please, God, don't let me speak unadvisedly. Please don't let me smite the rock. Please don't let me be wrong. And I don't know I'm wrong. Remember, there's a lie that can be told that only God himself can tell you it's not the truth. God can put something upon you, a delusion, and make you think you're right. When you're wrong, stand on your feet. It don't mean nothing no more. You preach now. Folk are so dead, they don't feel nothing. They pass feeling. Conscience is seared. You can get around folk and folk are seared your conscience. You can get around people and folk will make you feel like you're okay. You can get around family members and friends and other preachers and make you feel like you're okay. They'll give you a pass. They'll give you a license. they make you feel like it's okay to do what you're doing. It's okay to be a liar. It's okay to cheat on your income tax. It's okay to tell lies. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to live a false life. It's okay to do a little bit of that and a little bit of this. It's okay. It's okay if you jump back and just say, Lord, forgive me. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him. Him, him, he's a sin. If you willfully sin, after that you've come into the knowledge of the truth, you know better. Ain't no more sacrifice. He ain't dying for you no more. You're going to pay for that. I'm a living witness. You're going to pay for that. It ain't no more going to the cross. No. But a fearful looking to of the indignation and the wrath of God that comes upon the children of disobedience. It ain't what folk do to you. It's what you do to them. Please don't let me be wrong. And I think I'm right. Don't let me be wrong and I'm keep operating. I'm singing and everybody's telling me how good I sing. I'm playing and everybody's telling me how good I play. I'm preaching and everybody's texting me and saying it was such a good message. I'm working, I'm operating, I'm functioning. Everybody tell me how such a good worker I am, but I'm messed up. I'm messed up. I'm messed up. the church well it got so to the point where you can live like that and you don't even have to confess no more because they say it's okay God understands demons don't understand they know what God said and they go by the book that the wages of sin is death I'm going to kill your peace I'm going to kill your joy You'll wake up one day and you want to commit suicide because I've killed your peace. I've killed your joy. I've taken your faith so when a disease comes, you don't even have enough faith to say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You got the lean on man and cursed is the man that trusts in man and make flesh his arm. If you're in this building tonight and those of you in the live stream, who is your God? What is your God? Who is your God? What is your God? When is the last time you say, Lord, it's me, please? He'll cook you. There'll be a spirit of burning that'll come upon you. If you're in this building, preacher, reacher, teacher, handmaiden, prophetess, mama, daddy, how many killers in the house? How many demons you done brought in the house on your little innocent babies? How many killers in the house? How many killers in the house? How many folk you done ill-affected with your mess? How many, how many folk you done gave your second-hand hatred to? How many folk you done ill-affected? How many folk you done turned against folk? How many folk in here? How many of those of you in that live stream? How many folk have you killed with your sin? How many people you affected? How much blood you got on your hands?
every child much blood you got on your hands. Prophetess, how much blood you got on your hands. You don't want to come to the altar today. You don't want to cry on your own. I'm going to make you scream. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, there's those out in the live stream, Lord. There's those that are on their knees already, Lord. There's those that their stern will has become their altar. There's those that they desk on their work side and become their altar. There's those that have went over to the wall and begin to lean on the wall and say, it's me, oh God. It ain't my wife, it ain't my husband, Lord. It ain't my mama, it ain't my daddy, it's me, oh God. It ain't my pastor, Lord. I'm blaming everybody. I won't even take responsibility for my sin, my sin. The beginning of deliverance is acknowledgement. The beginning of deliverance is acknowledgement. When I acknowledge my sin against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this even in thy sight. Blot out my transgressions, my iniquities. My transgressions, my trespasses, call upon him, call upon him with your whole heart. Tell him right now, I'm messed up, I am. God, right now, get this demon of delusion up off of me, Lord. I done got around a bunch of backslidden folk, Lord. God, they're saying sin. Sin is right, calling evil good and good evil. God, today, Lord, please, God. God, give me back my mind. Give me back my conscience, Lord. Restore unto me the very joy of my salvation, Lord. Restore my soul, God. Give me my cry back, Lord. Give me reality back, Lord. I done lost touch with reality, Lord. Somebody got me thinking I can sin. and ain't nothing going to happen, Lord. Lord. God, death working in me. I can see it, but the devil don't want me to recognize. I'm dying. My faith, my anointing. Oh, God, my cry, my commitment, my dedication, Lord. God, my relationship is dead, Lord. I'm walking around. I got to take pills to get up, pills to make it through the day, pills to lay down again. When I used to have peace of mind, when I used to have joy divine, y'all better cry out to God tonight. You better call upon him with your whole heart. You better cry out to God with everything within you. Those of you in the live stream, you better tell him, Lord, it's me and it's me, it's me, oh God. It stands in the need of prayer, God. Lord, you sit in judgment, Lord. You said judgment must first begin at the house of the Lord. God, if it begins with us, where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear, Lord? You sent your son to die for us. You sent him to be tortured and brutalized, Lord, to be beaten beyond recognition, oh, Lord, for my salvation, oh, for my justification, Lord, oh, and then sent back this spirit oh, so I can live right, oh, so I can walk right, oh, so I can be right, Lord, oh, and I'm trampling under the feet of oh, the Son of God oh, and counting the blood of the covenant oh, like it ain't nothing oh, and doing despite oh, until the spirit of grace, God, oh, Lord, help me, God, oh, don't let me miss oh, the time of my visitation, Lord, oh, God, I'm noticing, oh, I'm getting harder. I'm noticing. Oh, it's taking more to pray. Oh, I'm noticing. Oh, God, I'm getting further, further away. Oh, God, please don't let decomposition. Oh, don't let God. Oh, Rick and Morty set in. Oh, catch me wild. Oh, I can get a heart transplant. Oh, catch me wild. Oh, I can get a brain transplant. Oh, catch me wild. Oh, you can put me on a respirator and revive me, Lord. Oh, revive me, Lord. Oh, restore me, Lord. Oh, renew me, Lord. Oh, God, call upon him. Call upon him, young lady. Call upon him, young man. I'm tired of being a killer. I'm tired of killing folk. I'm tired of people dying on my watch. I'm tired of people dying on my watch. I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> call on him. Call on him with your whole heart. Call up on him with your whole heart. Come on, live stream. Come on and cry out to God. Tell him right now, Lord. God, if I ever need you, I need you now, Lord. I need you in my home, Lord. My husband don't even want to be saved because of my nasty disposition, Lord. Claiming to be a Christian. My wife don't even want to come to church because of my nasty attitude. God, you got to help me, Lord. God, what they send at home. They see me at church one way, but they don't know what I done dropped at home. They don't know what I'm doing at home. They don't put my 
my whole family on lock, Lord. I put my children on lock, Lord. My baby's on their way to hell because I'm sitting around playing with sin. God, get this sin. Get it out of my life. Get this sin. It's killing me. It's killing my children. It's killing my marriage. It's wrecking my church. Get this sin. Get it out. It got me sick. It got me tormented. Get this sin. God, I'm calling it, Lord. I'm calling it, Lord. I ain't making no excuse. It's me, God. It's me, Lord. It's me, God. It's me, Lord. Help 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 me, Lord. Folks don't even got to cry no more like they used to, Lord. The devil done killed their cry, Lord. They done killed their tears, Lord. You told me years ago, Lord, don't let the devil take my cry, Lord. You told me years ago, don't let the devil take my conviction, Lord. You told me years ago, Lord, don't lose my cry, Lord. You said this poor man cried, and you inclined your ears unto his cry. When they cried, you delivered them out of all their distresses. When they cried, you delivered them out of the, out of the hand of the enemy. When they cried, you delivered them out of all of their trouble, Lord. God, don't let me lose my cry, Lord. I need deliverance today, Lord. I need deliverance today, Lord. Don't let me get bitter. Oh, let me get resentful. Oh, let me get hatred, Lord. Oh, let me get vindictive, Lord. God, get that murder spirit out of my heart. Get that murder spirit, Lord. Not to kill somebody physically, but I'm killing their influence. I'm killing their morals. I'm killing they standard. I'm killing they drive. I'm killing they chance of ever being saved. God, get that murder demon off of me. Get sin. Get it out of me. Get sin. Get it out of me. Sweet God, help me. God, you gotta help me, Jesus. God, you gotta help me, Jesus. What is it going to take? What is it going to take, woman? What is it going to take, man? What has God got to do to you to get your attention? He done loaned you the house. He done loaned you the wife. He done loaned you the husband. He done loaned you the children. He done loaned you the grandbabies. He gave you everything, and this is what you give me. What is it going to take to get your attention? Oh, God, you ain't got to do nothing to get my attention. You got me, Lord. You got me, Lord. You got me, Lord. You ain't got to kill another child, Lord. You ain't got to take another one of my children, Lord. You got my attention. You ain't got to send me through no more sickness. You got my attention. You ain't got to let a pack of demons jump up on me where I feel like I'm about to lose my mind. You got my attention, Lord. God, you ain't got to let a demon of suicide come upon me. If it had not been for you, Lord, I'd have been messed up. You ain't got to do it no more. You got my attention, Lord. I'm calling upon you. Somebody go wait until it's too late. Preacher, call him. Prophetess, call him. Deacon, call him. Handmaid, usher, pastor's aid, men in black, musician, praise team, call him. Call him. Kitchen help, call him. Media crew, call him. Call him. Call him. Call him. Call it. Mama calling for your children. Mama calling for your babies. You're the only bridge. You're the only one keeping judgment over, over your child. You get out of place with God. God will take his hand off your baby. God. Father, I praise you. I thank you for this word today. Please, Lord, get that murder demon off of me. That sin is a killer. Sin is a killer. Sin is a killer. How many people we have killed? How many women we have messed up and left them hole in the bag? How many men we done ruined and 
tore their homes up. How many men? How many folk you done killed? How many lives will never be the same because of you? Father, we thank you. Father, I appreciate you today. You spoke through me. You told me you would use me. You spoke to me today, Lord. Don't let me be a killer. I know what it means to be a killer, Lord. In every sense, I know what it means, Jesus. I know what it means to destroy somebody's life. And the worst death it is is to kill them and they're yet walking around on the face of this earth and have no direction. They don't know where to go. How many people out have messed up that will never come back to you, Lord, because of what they saw me do, Jesus, as a preacher? How many people have never come to God? There will be eternally lost because of me. How many folk on your job you done killed? How many folk in your neighborhood and your apartment complex? How many folk in your own house have you ruined? Stand on your feet with your head bowed and your eyes closed. You think this is a joke? God sent in his word as good as he's been to you. When you walk in that beautiful home and you see them cars, you look at your bank book and as good as he's been to you. As good as he's been to you, people that have went woman in New Orleans lost three sons in one week. And here you got all your children. Look as good as he's been to you. As good as he's been to you. And this is the reward we give him. Preachers, this is the reward we give him. We think we have to take a pistol. We think we have to take a knife. You don't even have to utter a word out your mouth. Your life kills people. There's folk will never ever get to come to God because they stumbled over your life. They stumbled over your life. Don't cry no more. America gonna weep. You think that they got cars out there? You think that they? You think that they uh, ain't got no cars? They can't make no cars. They telling you they can't find chips. But have you looked at the news? Have you saw Ford Motor Company going bankrupt? Have you saw? General Motors going bankrupt? Have you saw Jeep going bankrupt? How come ain't none of these car places? How come none of these big, big, big motor manufacturers are complaining about money when ain't no cars on the lot? Because they ain't building cars. They're building weapons. They're building tanks. If you look at the history, anytime they stop building cars, they start building weapons. And you don't even have a clue. America, you ain't ready for nothing. You can't take a book of talking about you lying on you. Folks get ready to be horrified. Folks going to be terrified. Folks, if they don't have God, they get ready to lose their mind. The Bible said men's hearts, hearts, this one you think with, and this one that pumps that blood, hearts are going to fail them. People are getting ready to lose their mind. People are getting ready to have a cardiac arrest because of the fear of looking at the things that are coming up on the face of this earth. You ain't saying nothing. You think I'm trying to scare you, and I am. Because folk don't have no fear. I told God this morning, 
Psalms 34 said, teach me the fear of the Lord. Isaiah 11 said, the spirit of fear of the Lord was upon, upon Jesus. He said, God let the spirit of fear of the Lord. The Bible said, they that fear the Lord shall not want for any good thing. You don't fear him, your kids don't fear him. Your children don't even have a fear of God. Your kids do stuff, come to church, they set up looking at their cell phone. No reference. Because you don't have none. Years ago when we was in church, we were so scared as children. But them folk would preach a word like I'm preaching right now. But they preach a word like we preach right now. We as little children would be over there crying. We would be on the altar with snot running down our little face. Four and five years old, six years old, just crying and screaming. These kids so mean and so nasty because somebody's a killer in the house. Somebody done killed their knowledge of God. Somebody done killed their reverence for the almighty God. How many killers we got in the house today? Father, let your blessings be upon your people. Lord, I pray right now. I need a miracle. I need a miracle in this ministry. You get ready to take this ministry to a whole nother level. For God, you got to get sin like you told Joshua. We will not be able to stand before our enemy until we get sin out the camp. Get it out of me, Lord. Please, God. I know I've made mistakes. I know, God, I have blood on my hands. Help me to wash my hands. Cleanse me. Cleanse me, Jesus. Wash me, Jesus. Give me another chance, Lord. Give me another chance with my family. Give me another chance with my children. Give me another chance. Oh, God, with my church. Give me another chance, Jesus. God, I praise you. Touch the live stream. Let the blessing be upon them in Jesus' name. Thank God, amen. As you go back to your seat. I want you to go back to your seat telling God, have mercy on me, oh God. As you go back to your seat. We worship Christ. We worship Christ. We just lift our hand to him today. We worship Christ. Our Lord. We worship Christ. Anybody want to worship him? We worship Christ. We just lift our hands to him today. We worship Christ. God bless you. Those of you on the live stream, we appreciate you and hope we said something to stir your pure heart to get closer and get back to God. We love you with our whole heart. Blessed are the they that are not offended. I came back upon the gospel. This is my peace. This is my joy. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God under salvation to all that will believe. Years ago, people was preaching this, but now folk don't preach like this no more. And it make wrong look right and right look wrong. But lift your hand and say, God still got some folks still standing on the wall. I love you today. Give God a great big hand praise. Until next service, live stream, God bless you. Give God a praise. Oh, give God. My live stream family, guess what time it is? 
It's giving time at Trumpet and Zion Fellowship. For those that want to give that extra 100, that extra 1,000, this is your time to sow into this great ministry. There are three easy ways for you to give on today. The first giving option is through Cash App. The Cash App name is dollar sign give T I Z. Once again, that's dollar sign give T I Z. The second giving option is PayPal. The PayPal name is paypal.me forward slash give T I Z. Again, that's paypal.me forward slash give T I Z. Did you know you can also mail in your seed gift? That mailing address is P.O. Box 1267, Gulfport, Mississippi 39502. Once again, that is P.O. Box 1267, Gulfport, Mississippi 39502. On behalf of our leader, Apostle Daryl Glenn McCoy, I want to say thank you for all of your gifts and all of your love. You can rest assured that God is putting every dollar to good use with upgrades and live stream equipment, outreach ministries and tent revivals and upgrades to the local assembly. Live stream family, we have reached the end. As always, I ask you to pray without ceasing. Keep God first. And as always, may God bless you. Can't wait to see you again.